for third most in the FBS, returning those seven starters on defense, and their head coach entering his third season. Mark Rick, great start to last season, not the finish you were hoping for. As a head right. coach, what do you, what comes to mind, and do you get motivated by the most? That great yeah. start or that yeah. tough finish? A little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. I mean, living through ten wins in a row to start the season, and I think we won the five the year before, so we had won 15 games in a row, and we were kind of mm. getting used to winning and not necessarily getting too comfortable, but um, you know, they came to a screeching halt, and, and we, we got to learn from it. Um, we weren't strong enough as a team to to finish like we needed to finish, and and I think everybody saw that, and so we'll use it as a learning uh, time, and we'll turn it around and get better. As you enter into your third season, where are you top to bottom with the depth of this roster? And everybody talks about yeah. you up front oh, yeah. on offense and Believe defense, me. and your, your <laughs> corner and all this. I, are you getting to where you want to be? Yesterday, I was speaking to a group in our building that are. <laughs> Uh, you know, part of our supporting sure. supporters and all, and uh, and the first question they asked was, "What are you most excited about?" And I said the very thing that you mentioned: our roster. I mean, I look at our depth chart and I look at all these receivers, and then I look at these running backs, and I look at the quarterback position, look at the linemen. You know, all the way down the line, I'm like, we've got guys that can play, yeah. and we got a bunch of them now where they can compete against each other for positions, but also compete against the other side of the ball to get better. Yeah. And that's we, when we have former players come back, the, 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 the Vilmas, the, the Ray Lewis's, the Michael Irvin, you know, Shockey, Will Fork, yeah. whoever you want, you could say there's a thousand of them, Frank Gores, those guys come back and they always say the toughest game of the week was a green tree practice field against the, <laughs> against each other. Right? Yeah. And that's where we have the ability to become again. A lot of that talent is young, mm -hmm. but when we when it gets developed and matures, we're going we're going to be pretty good. You look at that uh, <clears throat> schedule for Miami this season and, and taking on LSU and that opener. Where, where do you where do you yeah. come out on not only facing a tough <clears throat> opponent that first yeah. game, but also you don't know who their quarterback's going to be. Got right. a new OC. I mean, how are you yeah. preparing for that? <laughs> I don't know. That, I don't know whose idea it was to play that game. <laughs> I think I agreed to that thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get excited about that game. We're excited. Yeah. yeah We're so. excited. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be in, Jerry, in the Jerry Dome, as you know. It's going to be on Sunday night, the only game in town, and so it, you got to look at what Coach Ensminger's done in the past. Uh, you know, is it going to be Joe Burrows or is it going to be one of their current players? We, we have video on guys and get an idea of their quarterback situation. Uh, defensively, we know we, we don't know exactly what they'll do, but we got a pretty good idea of what they'll do. The, the problem's not the schemes. The problem is the dudes. The dudes yeah. <laughs> that, not the X's and those. That's why we talk about those. recruiting all the time. <laughs> it's the dudes, man. It's not the, it's not the coaches. <laughs> The coaches that can get the dudes, there you go. They're, they're the smart ones, you know. So that, that's what it's about. Speaking of dudes, and, and you guys had to work through some things. Uh, you had an injury with Mark Walton. Travis Homer oh, yeah. comes aboard. Jeff Thomas is a true freshman a year right. ago. Amon was injured. Yeah. But Malik Rozier <laughs> kind of seemed to be the, the steady, consistent guy. But for him and you guys offensively, yeah. to take that next leap, yeah. to, to be more dynamic, create more explosive plays, right. what does Malik have to do? Yeah, well, we were actually a pretty good explosive play team. Yeah. Our problem was third down conversions right. and touchdowns in the red zone. But I'll say this. A healthy Amon Richards will help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, get, you know, Jeff Thomas being more experienced, a, a bigger pocket helps. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, you go back and look at the tape, the bigger the pocket, the more accurate he was, you know? Isn't that funny how that works? Hey, out? let's block better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Let's run routes better. Now, Malik. When the protection's there and guys are open, you gotta you gotta hit him. Yeah. You know, which he can do. But uh, this guy if you just watch the season like I do on the TV copies and all that, and you kind of watched what he did, he made some spectacular plays in some really big moments last year that we're not going to win certain games without him mm -hmm. playing big and even using his wheels the way he did. We're not going to beat Florida State if he doesn't play big in the last two drives. Of the game. We had two 75-yard uh, drives back-to-back -to, -back to finish that game to win it. Uh, you know, we had... The, the, you know, he played well in the Virginia Tech game. He he played very well in the Notre Dame game. 
he made a big play uh, against Georgia Tech when we had to have it. So uh, the only thing I, I will, I'll say, the only one of my biggest regrets now that I went back and watched it, if I played Pitt again, I'd leave Malik in there mm. and I'd let him try to fight his way Just work out. Yeah, yeah. Even as, as bad as we were struggling <laughs> and as bad as he was struggling, I, I wish I'd have gave him the chance because he. He was struggling in other games, not quite as mightily in my opinion, yeah. but, you know, I, I would have been, it would have been interesting to see if he could have done it. And sometimes you make the decision to make the move, mm -hmm. and you don't know what, where the ball is going to be in the next series, sure, you know. Right. So we actually had the ball about midfield, and really if I was smarter, I would have probably just let him work his way out. And we get one drive there, and it may have changed the whole thing. So we got about 30 seconds. Sure. I want to ask you about one more Miami quarterback, okay. the former one, Jim yes. Kelly. Yes. Uh, I grew up a big Bills fan. Yes. He's a hero of mine, former yes. teammate of yours, getting an yeah. SB award tonight, Jimmy yeah. V award for perseverance. Yes. What does he mean to you? Uh, I love Jim Kelly. Where's the camera? Right there. Right there. Hey. I love Jim. Uh, right over here. I'm so proud of you, Jim. Right over here. He, Jim knows I love him. His family knows I love him. And uh, he's obviously a, a hurricane, but he's a dear friend. And uh, just so proud of him winning that award. He deserves it. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate the You got it. Thank you. Mark Richt and the Miami, Miami Hurricanes taking on LSU again. We don't know who, who decided on that game, but um, it's September 2nd coming up there as we're all excited for that one. And again, Florida State, you see them on October 6th and end the season against the team that beat them a year ago, Pittsburgh. I right, just heard from Mark Richt and, of course, Miami on an, on an upward trend, yep. making it to the uh, ACC championship game a season ago. Got a double-digit win season. We always talked about in the ACC, it's Clemson, Florida State, Clemson, Florida State. Might Miami now be that second team? Is it Clemson, Miami? If you, if you look at the trajectory right now, I would say yes. Um, I think you've had more consistency over the last two years than you've had out of Florida State's program. I think athletically you have two teams that are very, very similar. Um, with Miami, with that being said, a couple of things have to happen. Amon Richards has got to stay healthy. He has to. Um, Miami in the defensive front four had a couple of early departures to the NFL draft that I don't think they anticipated happening. While the three linebackers are back, they've got to get some guys in front to establish themselves outside of Joe Jackson on the outside. But I think maybe more so than anything else, in my opinion, for Miami to take the next step and for you to be asking me the question, are Miami and Clemson on par now? Okay. Then the quarterback position has to become more dynamic. It can't just be sufficient. Not saying that the, the guy has to be a complete and utter dish, difference maker, but Miami's offense has to become more dynamic with Malik Rozier and Nicosia Pierre, whoever it is, so that when defenses see this offense break the huddle, they're worried about who's under center. But with Travis Homer back, who I think is going to be a really special player, maybe a breakout player, uh, Jeff Thomas got a taste of it as a true freshman uh, receiver a year ago. All the components are there. I'm looking for them to take the next step at quarterback if they really want to separate themselves from Florida State and consider themselves on par with Clemson. Okay, so Nikosi Perry is a guy you, you knew about coming sure. out of high school, number 84 overall prospect, class of 2017 in recruiting. Is he, I don't know if it's, is he ready, but how would you compare he and Rozier? What, what would he give Mark Richt that maybe Rozier does not? Well, I think it is fair to say, is he ready? Because coming out of high school, he was not ready. He was physically gifted, but nowhere near polished, nowhere near the nuance that you have to have to understand all the different things that are coming at you. Where Malik Rozier had a, a distinct advantage, and it's one that I think has carried over and really helped him, he was able to redshirt. He was able to develop. He was able to be brought along slowly. And probably there were not a lot of people that thought he would ever be the starting quarterback at Miami. And now here he goes into year two. Nikosi Perry is more athletic. He's bigger, he's faster, but he hasn't played. And, and there's, there's something got, to be said for He got to learn for, for a year. He got to learn for a year. They got to bring him along. And let's, let's keep in mind, too, with this offense, Matt, this isn't a dink and dunk spread offense where you sit in the shotgun, you look to the sideline, and the quarterback tell, or the coach tells you where to go with the ball. There's a lot incumbent on the quarterback to understand the theory of the game in this offense. So you've got to be a bright guy. So with a guy like Nikosi Perry, he's probably had to learn an awful lot of football. Yeah. Miami Hurricanes coming off that 10-3 and season. We'll hear from wide receiver Mon Richards, again, coming off that injury from a season ago. That's coming up.